Today we want to look at a very important topic. And I want you to, at the end thereof, just determine in your heart whether this message would have significant effect upon you. You would have to make your decision even as you listen to the message entitled, We Are Family. Before I go any further, let us take that opportunity to ask God to be with us, to guide us, even as his words are being presented. Once more, dear Father, we thank you. We thank you that you are so good to us. You would have made the ultimate provision so that all of us can be a part of your family. Take charge of this presentation. Bless each and every one of us. And may we as the hearers respond to the call. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we are looking at a very important topic. A topic with which by now we all should be familiar. We want to look at a scripture text taken from Matthew chapter 1. And I'm going to look at the whole issue of family. And in the past, back in the day, when we, we, we speak about Bible and the, the Bible and we talk about family, we we'll see that there are references to the lineage under which certain families came. And today we want to look at the family of Jesus, right? And the lineage or the genealogy that is involved. Uh, Matthew chapter 1, 1 to 16 gives you a clear indication as to Jesus' in, uh, genealogy. So reading, it says, the book of the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham begot Isaac, and Isaac begot Jacob, and Jacob begot Judas and his brethren, and Judas begot Phares and Zara of Thamar, we call her Tamar, and Phares begot Ezra, and Ezra begot Aram, and Aram begot Aminadab, and Aminadab begot Nason, and Nason begot Salmon, and Salmon begot Boaz of Rehab, and Boaz begot Obed of Ruth, and Obed begat Jesse, and Jesse begat David the king, and David the king begat Solomon of her that had been the wife of Uriah. And Solomon begat Rabuam, and Rabuam begat Abia, and Abia begat Asa, and Asa begat Josephat, and Josephat begat Joram, and Joram begat Ozias. Uh, verse 9, and Ozias begat Joatham, and Joatham begat Ahaz, or Ashaz, and Ashaz begat Ezekiah, and Ezekiah begat Manasseh, and Manasseh begat Ammon, and Ammon begat Josiah, and Josiah begat Jeconias and his brethren about the time they were carried away to Babylon. And after they were brought to Babylon, Jeconias begat Salatiel, and Salatiel begat Zerubbabel, and Zerubbabel begat Abiod, and Abiod begat Eliakim, and Eliakim begat Azor. And Azor begat Zadok, and Zadok begat Akim, and Akim begat Eliod, and Eliod begat Eliezer, and Eliezer begat Matham, and Matham begat Jacob, and Jacob begat Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who is called the Christ. Now, this is one genealogy that is recorded in the scripture, but we need to understand that there have been several genealogies according to the scriptures. Uh, many of them may not be mentioned because of the, the, the importance attached to them. But listen to, 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 to some of these genealogies. In Genesis chapter 4, we have the genealogy starting with Adam and uh, it dealt with Cain and, it, it, and its descendants before returning to Adam. Then in Genesis 5 verses 1 to 32, we see it starts with Adam and it ends with Noah. In Genesis 10, 1 to 32, again, you see it started with the descendants of Noah and his sons, firstly Japheth, then Ham, and then Shem. And in Genesis 11, 10 to 32, it started with Shem and ended with Abraham. Now, when we look at the New Testament, we, we, we have the one in Matthew chapter 1 which we just read about, Jesus Christ. And then in Luke chapter 3, reading from 23 to 28, it has 
it started with Jesus and takes us back to Adam. So these are important genealogies that the scriptures record. And some people do not like to deal with the genealogy because it has too much begats. But we must understand that these begats are very important because it points out certain things that we would not otherwise observe. So here are three points that are worth noting from the genealogy of Jesus Christ, which was read uh, from first, first, from Matthew chapter one. Actually, we, we we see here the first point that we need to note is that there was significant a significant amount of persons of ill repute and of notoriety in the, the, the lineage of Christ, and, and, and it's important for us to note that because. It, it tells us something. The, the genealogy of Jesus Christ consisted of people who we would not want to call family. In, in, in if it, it happened to us, right? You know, we have families who we do not like to recognize because they have ill repute. Uh, one might be a person who smokes and gambles, a run woman, a, a, a person who has philandering and all like that but jesus had all of these in his genealogy and they were not forgotten for a reason for example when we look at abraham abraham was a liar he was a liar because twice abraham lied about sarah his wife not being his wife but being his sister and we can read those accounts in genesis chapter 12 uh, 12 to 20 and also in genesis chapter 20 so we know he was a liar, but we also know that say a Abraham committed adultery with Hagar because even though his wife instructed him, he still went outside of the marital union and had a child, which is what adultery. That child was Ishmael, and that story can read in Genesis chapter 16. So that's Abraham. What is Isaac? Isaac followed in his father's footsteps and he lied about Rebekah, his wife. He told them that Rebekah was his sister because of fear. So we would say like father, like son, but he was a liar as well. Genesis chapter 26, 7 to 9 gives you that story. Jacob, there are a lot of references for Jacob, but I just mentioned the fact that Jacob was a usurper. We know that uh, Jacob, any opportunity you have, uh, Jacob had, he would lie about it. He would take the opportunity to rob you and to take what is yours. That was Jacob. He did it to Esau on more than one occasion. But he was also an adulterer because we see in Jacob's case when his wife, Rachel, could not have young one, she gave, her, gave him her handmaid. And then when Leah became barren, she also did the same thing. So you find that he had children outside of his marital vows because uh, his wife and regardless of the excuse this was adultery and what about Judah? Judah was dishonest he was dishonest because when uh, his sons two of his sons who were married to Tamar failed to produce children and died he felt that the third son who was old enough to, to, to marry to to Tamar so that she could have produced offspring he felt that that would be another scenario and he didn't want to lose another son so he sent Tamar back to her father's womb being dishonest not dealing with her above board but he also ended up sleeping with Tamar and having an incestuous relationship resulting in the birth of twin Pharez of whom uh, the lineage through Christ, who, who, who produced Christ, Pharaoh was born out of an incestuous relationship. And that story can be found in Genesis chapter 38, 11 to 25. So we see that Judah was also in, in the lineage of Christ. And what about Tamar? We, we will talk about Tamar a little bit more, but she was deceptive because out of her desire to have children through the legitimate means, she resorted to deception and had a one night stand with her father in law, which produced twins. Genesis chapter 38, 6 to 12 tells us more about that. Then we have Rehab. Yes, Rehab the harlot. Rehab, because of the way she dealt with uh, the spies and the, the, the way she negotiated with them, Rehab's 
life was saved and through her through her she produced a child as well so this is very interesting that Rahab here is mentioned a harlot is being mentioned as one of the progenitors of Jesus Christ we can read that story in Joshua chapter 1 3 and also Joshua chapter 6 verse 17 David well we would want to have nothing to do with David because he, he was famous as an adulterer well not famous he was notorious as an adulterer and also a murderer and we, we saw that he slept with Bathsheba and when uh, it was revealed that Bathsheba was pregnant with child he decided that Uriah should take the blame when Uriah refused to take the blame he decided to put an end to Uriah's life and that story can be read in both in 2 Samuel chapter 11 right until 2 Samuel chapter 12 and what about Solomon Solomon was a philanderer in other words he ran women up and down the place uh, he was also an idolater and we can read Solomon's story in 1st Kings 1 to 11 we could also read in 2nd Chronicles 1 to 9 Solomon he was in such a state that his concubines uh, had him doing all sorts of things he resorted to righteous living he resorted to idolatry Solomon was in a total mess and but he is mentioned as one of the progenitors of Jesus Christ we we'll, second point that we need to observe is that three women non-jewish women were mentioned in Christ's genealogy and this is important because when we speak about the genealogy of in the Jewish system there were no or little mention of women whenever a woman's name was mentioned is because she was obviously very important in the whole scheme of things and therefore we have to understand and appreciate the fact that these three women had to be uh, of great significance to be mentioned in the genealogy of Christ note that they were not Jewish women and you find Tamar being the first one and we would have heard about Tamar before Tamar is the person who uh, slept with her father-in-law and produced two sons one of them Pharez was the one through whom Jesus Christ came Genesis chapter 38 24 to 30 first Chronicles chapter 2 verse 4 are the reference points here Rehab we would have spoken about Rehab before Rehab story can be found in Joshua chapter 6 uh, 22 to 23 and Joshua chapter 2 also tell us about how she dealt with the spies but it is important for us to realize that Rehab was a harlot and through her actions and activities her household was saved right she brought her family out of of Jericho even though Jericho was destroyed because she accept the God of the children of Israel she would have heard about God and she decided to accept God she accepted God to the extent that she got married to one of the soldiers some 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 uh, writers would tell you and out of, of that relationship a son was produced uh, that son was Boaz was produced the same Boaz subsequently would have married to Ruth and Ruth who is the third woman who a story can be found in Ruth chapter 4 reading from 13 right on to 17 we would see that that same Ruth in question right got who got married to Boaz produced Obed who was the father of Jesse the father of David so even though Ruth was a non-Jew we see that Ruth was very prominent and very important in the genealogy of Christ Jesus uh, we need to understand something that here it is showing you that it doesn't matter where you come from when it comes to salvation it has nothing to do with your nationality here we see these three non-jewish women were integral in the genealogy the genealogy of jesus christ but the third point that we need to consider is when jesus 
came on the scene, he put an end to genealogy. There are no other record of the lineage of Christ that we can find in the scripture after his birth. So, we need to understand one, that Jesus came to save sinners, not to perpetuate, project, protect any race or nation. Matthew chapter 1 verse 21 tells us, And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. It is telling me that he shall save anyone, anyone, regardless of your background, regardless of your race. Once you are a sinner, Jesus was interested or is interested in you. Two, Jesus was spiritual even though he was born of the flesh. And John 3, 6 tells us that which is born of the flesh is flesh. But that which is born of the spirit is spirit. And this is where it digress because Jesus was sent from heaven. He came through the flesh. But indeed, he was of a spiritual nature. He was not like any other man. He was different because his father was God. Or his father is God. So, Jesus was of the Spirit, and therefore, he would not continue in the line of lineage. Number three, Jesus came to make, all, make us all sons and daughters of God. Uh, John 1 12 tells us, But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. So we are seeing here that John is telling us that Christ came to make us sons and daughters of God. In 1 John 3 1 to 3, he says, Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should not be called the sons of God. Sorry, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because we, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath his hope in him, prefers himself even as he is pure so we are seeing here that jesus mission was different in that he came to change the whole paradigm he came to make us sons and daughters of god equipping us not for this world but to equip us for god's kingdom finally jesus came to die for mankind Jesus came to die for all of mankind. And Galatians chapter 3, 28 to 29 said, There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be, be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So this gives you a different dimension. Because Jesus was not here to, 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 to propitiate to continue pushing a race continue pushing lineage he came to die he came for everyone he came to deal with individuals regardless of your background regardless of your grace your, your, your race and this is why there is neither born nor free Jew nor Greek male or female Jesus is not concerned about our status He's not concerned about our social class. He's not concerned about our educational background. Jesus is as concerned about individuals. And this is why the Bible tells us, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, and that includes everyone, the vagrant, the prostitute, the thief, the adulterer, the fornicator, the smoker, the drinker, and just name it, everyone, once you are a sinner, Jesus is interested in you. And this is why we who claim to be children of God must understand that we must continue doing what Jesus did. 
calling men and women regardless of their background to know jesus christ to surrender themselves and this is why the bible says for god so loved the world god so loved the world and let us understand that when jesus came here he came on a different mission he didn't come to uh, 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 continue a, a lineage he came to set men free he would have signed or he would have confirmed the agreement that his father he would have made with his father before the foundation of the world in the garden of eden when man sinned that he would come finally to bring an end to the sin problem that man has faced today we have people on the outside we have friends we have families who need to know jesus we have a responsibility we have a responsibility to, to to tell them that they are part of the family of god because jesus died to save them and it doesn't matter where they are who they are he wants them into his in his kingdom are we going to respond today are we going to let others know about jesus love today are you going to surrender to him today and allow the freedom that he has offered allow the sacrifice that he has made to impact your life this is what we should do i can't tell you what to do you have to make up your mind that what jesus would have done for you would have been sufficient and that you would follow and obey what he asks of you merciful father god of love thank you for the sacrifice you have made thank you for the fact that when you came here you said that you want to set us free you said that we are part of the family help us to embrace the fact that we are family and treat others in that way recognizing that we are all one in christ jesus we thank you in jesus precious name amen